have you here and there would be so many things to discuss about diversity, for example, the use of AI and gender bias and, and also minding small and small and um, big companies in legislation. Like in, in Finland, we have a few interesting legislations that require APIs. And there we had a few discussions on uh, if they are kind of fair and, and doable for small businesses to, or, or local businesses to take part in. For example, the traffic uh, regulations that require APIs from all traffic providers. But without further ado, we'll go to the next topic and we'll talk about API economy and platform skills and how do we actually make the change happen? Because this event is all about, you know, do an API strategy, start API governance, start in general making APIs or create your platforms. But it requires a lot from us humans and a lot of, from us organizations to do that. And, and lots of companies actually struggle with the, the change uh, because you need to change not only the tech, but the business models and the humans too. And uh, I would uh, be glad if you guys have any comments or questions in the chat during my presentation. Uh, yes, and then I screwed up with the sharing. I was supposed to share the slides and stop my camera and not the other way around, but hey, um, let's start. So, as well as being the local organizer of API Days Helsinki with the API Days Global team, um, you have possibly met or heard or me been messaged from uh, me or Julia Korpela from our team. But I am also organizing the API Ops meetups in, in Helsinki and sometimes also in Tampere in Finland. But we have API Ops meetups in US too. And I've been consulting and, and training a lot of companies um, in API and platform economy and, and related business models, but also the kind of technical side of things. And one of the key things I, I kind of am passionate about and which is related to those skills and change is uh, the API up cycles method that I talked about in, in API Days New York this summer, and I will talk about it also in API Days Australia in a few weeks. And you can check the website apupcycles.com if you are interested to know more. So API Economy 101 is the book I co-authored with Jarkko Molanen, uh, Marko Seppanen and Mika Honkanen. And, and Jarkko and Marko are actually speaking uh, during this event and Mika might be hanging around in the chat or something somewhere. Uh, so you, you can talk to us all. Now, what is this? change um, and, and what's, why do we need to talk about change? So the first thing is that a lot of our methods and our ways of practice are centered around a product, a one digital product, uh, for example, one application, which has essentially one or few groups of users and, and there is no specific business model associated with a digital product. Uh, it can be a lot of things. It can be a SaaS uh, system. It can be uh, just an extranet for customers or, or a mobile app for COVID virus or something like that. But it's kind of a simple thing. But then when we grow it uh, to a full-blown platform, it starts to have things like network effects and multi-sided uh, platforms have multiple shareholders with their own value propositions on the platform. It's Sometimes we need com very compliant platforms. A lot of times we need them. Uh, many of the platforms are quite complex on that. Terms. For example, we were uh, designing uh, the legal design aspects of, of uh, the Visit Finland Travel Data Hub uh, platform this summer. And it is a lot of work to think about how to make a fair and kind of diversity supporting, uh, even if it's startups, or businesses, companies, uh, and with mul uh, global uh, big companies together in the same platform, how to cover data ownership, how to kind of make it very interesting for all the participants to join, regardless of those legal aspects. 
and how to design not only the terms and conditions, but also the features of the platform so that it fits all those needs. So a lot of the stuff that is kind of very um, small thing in a normal single digital product are getting a little bit more complex in platforms and they need more skills. They need different kinds of thinking. But we are lacking in a lot of cases in the simple fact of productization and product management, especially in Finland, the, the kind of culture of product management is fairly young in, in a lot of industries related to, for example, software development. And this means that we are kind of uh, often lacking with the business and development side working together. And when we start building ecosystems, we need to also introduce partnership making and, and partnership like network moving there and making sure that we are uh, kind of having the right uh, value props for the partners and that we are getting something out of the ecosystem ourselves. So a lot of uh, the companies in this conference who are presenting, the, the speakers are actually talking about how they are creating their own ecosystem. So then the question is, should the whole organization be dreaming in digital uh, to make this API economy and platform economy and all this digital business to work? And in a way, yes, is my answer. Um, the problem is that a lot of us, a lot of you, are still having the problem that the rest of the organization feels like it's in analog mode. So uh, there might be some legacy tech, there might be some legacy thinking, there might be organizational silos, there's no budget, uh, marketing doesn't get it, or sales doesn't get it, or the, the uh, R&D department doesn't get it, somebody doesn't get it. Often it's the business managers who don't get it, at least when you ask the IT guys. So a lot of kind of uh, misconceptions and, and something is missing. So how to make the change? And does it always kind of fail <laughs> to make the change? So there's this strong ground belief that 70% of all the organizational changes uh, might fail. And that was because of a misinterpreted um, research paper. Uh, once upon a time, a few years back. But actually, there is some evidence that 30% um, of the changes uh, succeed and 30% more of the changes succeed in some extent. So the question is, why do some of the change um, initiatives, why do they actually work? And how, do, how would we use that information to make a lot more API and platform uh, initiatives to work. So the question is, how do you talk about the change to people? How do you kind of set them to succeed? So I love this quote uh, from, from the HBR article, which actually um, has those research uh, articles there listed and, and the kind of idea that priming people with a simple fact about the high probability of successful change is actually the first gate to and the first way to succeed in the change. And this is something, uh, my, my background is in education actually, and slightly in the computer science and leadership, but, but more in the education originally. And in education, we have this constructive uh, learning paradigm, which basically starts from if you are motivated to learn something, you will kind of start learning it. Uh, it might be that no one is teaching you it or, or kind of you are not consciously learning about it or studying about it, but you're still learning because you have the motivation to learn. And if you don't have that motivation, then the learning just doesn't happen. And if there is no learning, there is no change. So in, in, in a lot of companies there who think themselves as agile or lean, there is this idea that you have to fail often and you have to fail fast in order to succeed. And, and there is some scientific fact uh, to prove that too. Now, we talk about change and we talk about people in the organization. So who are those people in API economy that need to change? And surprisingly, it is not just the developers or uh, the architects or, or the technical people. 
it's everyone pretty much from customer experience designers, business people, business modelers, um, marketers, salespeople, even purchasing people who, who need to buy things and services. For example, I have been explaining a lot in the few years back that uh, to, to a big company's purchasing department that why should they buy Twilio, for example, or some other uh, SMS sending uh, cloud provider with APIs instead of some local um, kind of traditional telco provider who that time didn't have APIs at all. So uh, a lot of the change needs to happen in all of the other departments than the IT department. And that is uh, the, the kind of crucial problem or the crucial thing to acknowledge and not maybe see it as a problem, but accept it. Now then, what do we do to make that happen? And why do, how do we kind of justify to um, those business people that, hey, you need to change? Well, actually, a lot of times they don't need to change that much. They might already have this great idea of, of uh, building ecosystem journeys and kind of partnering up with companies to provide this great um, overall user experience and optimize supplier processes and, and cut costs or grow market share. Those are the things that the business is, of course, interested in. But uh, what they are afraid of sometimes with API initiatives is that they need to let go of some of the customer experience and some of the own channels that they are so keen about. So instead of building your own favorite app or your pretty online store, you need to use something brute like an API and let somebody else sell your goods and, uh, and, and other resources and mind your customer experience. And that is a frightening thought to a lot of um, business managers because it's a loss of control. And instead of thinking of it like that, um, they should be thinking of the network effect uh, about the kind of possibilities of offering all of the resources to a lot of different uh, companies and, and users and getting kind of, in a way, viral with the use of their uh, companies offering and resources. But then there is the thing that um, it's not about the pretty website or the traditional marketing channels. Uh, in Finland, we, we tended to go, the bosses, the CEOs tended to go to saunas and have like a go naked with the customers and have some, some vodka or whatever uh, to make the sale. So that's not going to work anymore, really, uh, in this scenario. It's not about the traditional marketing and sales and decision making but or deal making, but it is about the uh, different kind of customer uh, experience and developer experience. Developers here don't necessarily mean um, kind of customer or, or software developers. They mean builders of any kind who need those resources and need access to those resources to build whatever they want to build. And this is actually something that we will hear in track one, or stage one, um, after these opening words about the kind of understanding who is really the customer and, and who is the developer and how that should show up in, in your developer relationships and who are you actually building stuff for. So then APIs can also be, as said, a platform boundary resource. They can be an access to a platform and the platform can either be uh, a very kind of one-sided or two-sided platform and just provide access to certain resources, for example, cognitive resources or other resources, but it can be a way to actually do the whole transaction, share trust, share um, a, a common solution to communication and collaboration problems because platform economy actually runs with the lack of trust, with the lack of communication. And that is an important thing to understand. How do you facilitate uh, all the stakeholders, for example, in a multi-sided platform uh, so that they can exchange the good services and data 
and, and kind of build that trust through your platform in order to uh, achieve what they want to achieve. And we talked a lot about the resources. So one skill, one thing that we all need to kind of adopt in this is that we understand that what, what things can be APFI'd. So we think often that, you know, data in general, whatever data, but what is that data actually about? Well, it's, it's about all the stuff that the organization needs to run and the stuff that the organization either, either owns or buys or steals or borrows uh, or sells, but it can be a lot of different things. We collected uh, this updated uh, picture of our list of resources with Professor Marcus Eppen and, uh, in, when we were writing the book, API Economy 101, and there's a lot of the stuff that actually we, we, can, we can already see that a lot of these things like trademarks or patents or uh, you know, a lot of like emotions, for example, or, or interpreting emotions can be already bought and sold with APIs. But it can be a very tangible thing. It can be also humans in a way that can be uh, kind of bought or, or sold with, with APIs, not to be going into the slave market, but for example, translators or other professionals um, work can be organized via a platform and even automated the work distribution via a platform or given them a possibility to opt in for jobs via a platform. And essentially the way that the customers interact with that platform or those people and those, um, well, resources in this case is through the APIs. And that is an interesting thing to also think about. And that might change your business model a lot if you think about first having those professionals, those people there doing the, the thing that they do or selling goods. But then actually you might end up selling information or data about those goods or even recommendation algorithms or other ways of, of kind of interacting or recommending or, or sorting out those goods. So these are all very interesting possibilities to uh, kind of build and use with APIs, but they need a new kind of thinking from the top management down to whoever needs to make it happen. So the question is, who is keeping your team on the right path to the platform economy? Whose job is it? Because you might have a product owner, you might have a product manager, you might have a head of digital or head of integration or head of R&D, but whose job is it really? And we are seeing more and more of these kind of virtual teams and, and ad hoc teams, and somebody needs to still manage them in a way that, or lead them or, or guide them. Uh, to, towards the kind of right way of doing the APIs and platforms, but also the kind of right way of thinking about the ecosystem. Who do we actually want to partner with us? Uh, what does that mean to our API design or our platform uh, capabilities? And a lot of the things are happening without the product managers or product owners even noticing it. So a lot of times we see platforms being built um, with APIs included and, and very core technology inside of them. But actually, the product manager doesn't even know that there will be APIs or thinks that there will be APIs only for a very limited scope while the whole thing is actually running and exposing APIs all the time. And it's, it's basically a matter of just understanding as a user when you kind of log in, if, it's, if it has a user interface, that, hey, there are actually APIs here that I could use whether the company or the team intended them to be used or not. So a lot of these things will happen even if the change is not planned. So one thing is when we get to plan the change, the other thing is when the change just happens and we, we weren't prepared for it or we didn't even notice that it happened. And this has happened before. So for example, Tesla was one of those great examples where they had APIs in their car for their own purposes, but suddenly uh, a lot of enthusiastic people who wanted their Tesla uh, noticed that, hey, now they have those APIs and started kind of uh, re-engineering the documentation 
uh, from what they were seeing and, and they started using those APIs whether Tesla wanted them to use them or not. So this brings me to one of the kind of key final points that API economy actually is, is well, it is about building skills, but it is about also unlearning things that we thought we knew. So we are running this introduction to API economy online course uh, in Osanga Academy with open, uh, it's, it's an open university course and it's uh, done by us and Tampere University. And the wonderful thing that we kind of planned, but it, it starts to happen even more uh, than we thought, is that a lot of the, the attendees are actually unlearning their first thoughts about API economy. When they are enrolling in the course, they might have years of experience or no experience of APIs, but what they have learned about APIs might be about the software development side and the technical side. But actually, uh, when they come and learn about the business model side, it actually takes them by surprise uh, to think that APIs really are a business thing and should be considered from a business model perspective. And these are just some quotes from our students in that course, um, which were kind of warming my heart, so to say. Uh, then, uh, why should we kind of mind this? Because there is research, again, by a group of researchers where Marco Seppanen was one of those researchers, that the amount of APIs correlates with global startup uh, growth index and that APIs thrive in cultures where uh, marketers, and, oh, sorry, marketers and software developers um, coexist and co-create. And if we compare the, the size of the dots uh, from a few years back of the APIs, in Silicon Valley or, for example, around uh, London or, or Paris or somewhere, we can see that there is a dot in Helsinki, but the dot could be slightly bigger. And uh, these are the things that we have been working with, like getting the product management culture in there, getting the, the kind of marketers and software engineers, to, uh, software engineers to understand that they need each other, but also not just as the last thought, um, you kind of fill in the marketing into the API and document the API and, and think that that is the marketing needed, but to really think what is the value proposition of that API that we are building before we start building it. And that is the key thing to kind of learn and the key thing why we emphasize it in the API of cycles method from where this uh, API canvas is actually from, from a case with water services providers that I talked about, uh, for example, in API Days Helsinki June. So kind of the last points of this talk are that be aware that whatever technology you or your customers are using, whether they are talking about IoT or blockchain or something else, there will be APIs and API business models, API uh, APIs inside the business model, like here um, in IoT or like here in blockchain, it's a lot about AP, uh, APIs. And also in kind of industry specific business models like mobility as a service. This is an interesting study about uh, the mobility as a service kind of uh, business models. And here we can see that one of the key things, well, uh, a few of the th key things of that business model is related to APIs, so there are open APIs and standardized APIs mentioned, which is kind of funny because uh, we have a working group in Finland where we have come to the conclusion that <laughs> to be open as an API, you actually need to kind of think about the standardization or de facto standardization of the APIs early on. So uh, I want to leave you with this and, and kind of ask also if you have any comments or opinions, but um, uh, a research group did this study in Slush, uh, which is a big startup event in, in Helsinki, in Finland, um, every year. And they found out that kind of startups evaluated these activities or think these areas of development as the biggest thing uh, that they should concentrate on. So you can see that these are very, very linked into uh, APIs, into platforms, into data. Um, 
and also cover the both kind of business side and marketing side, uh, as well as the technical side. And these were platform identified as platform companies. And it would be interesting to, to research more uh, in a wider scale how these things look like in another kind of um, set of, of companies to study. And this is actually something I'm, I'm intending to start studying next myself. So I leave you with this and just uh, kind of reminding that, yes, there is a difference with these uh, business models and, and we need to think very differently about how we interact with customers, how we scale up uh, the business. And these are the things that we should remind our business managers and just pointing out the talks in Australia, there will be some some more talk about API cycles. Uh, also, there will be some, some courses and webinars this autumn about API cycles by Osango. And you will get these links uh, when the presentation is, is shared uh, after the event. So let's keep in touch. And if you have any questions, we have a few moments to take some questions. I see that the audience has already been very actively discussing <laughs> things about APIs and productization uh, in the chat. So if you have any, any questions about the presentation or the event organization, I'm happy to answer them now. And so while you are possibly thinking of your question, a couple of uh, points like Alan is saying that there will be talks about this um, building the API products and, and who is really the customer um, in the in stage one after the break. And um, all the talks in that track are, are some way or another uh, concentrated on that. And then we'll have some, some specific industries like traffic industry and healthcare industry and, and a few others. Um, in the stage two after the break. If there are no more questions, I will end my presentation here. And it has been wonderful to get all of you into this event. And I hope you will have some interesting time and you will network and don't be afraid to ask anything and everything from our speakers, they are here to answer your questions as well as having an interesting time themselves. Thank you.